Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about, you know, what's Jesus telling you to do, the Holy Spirit telling you to do, the Holy Ghost, um, God, just kind of, you know, it's a directional thing. So really, I'm going to kind of dive into it. He's been dealing with me in some dreams, um, a lot of different kind of dreams, but some of them have been just specific scriptures, and this is some of the scriptures that he gave me, and I'm just going to kind of do like a part one, part two, part three, so they're shorter videos, but anyhow, I'm going to dive right into it. He, Colossians 3.16 Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymnals and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So, what he told me was that, that Colossians 3.16 was just as important as John 3.16. And then if you read down from 12 all the way down, it talks about um, forgiveness for one another. Um, 3.16 is kind of dwelling on the fact that we need to just kind of uplift each other in songs and hymns and just uplift our brothers and sisters in the Lord, you know. Um, part of this message and theme all ties into the same thing about, um, which is part of it, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, and how the body is His glory. Because Jesus was God's glory. John 17, just read that one. And when Jesus is in us, we become God's glory. We're His glory because we all have a story. And God wants us to just be those vessels, whatever He's telling us to do. I'm not, I'm, you know, we can be in error sometimes and think it's God and it's not. But, you know, I like to think that 90% of what I do is, is spot on. I'm sure there's some that, you know, I don't always get it right, of course. But if God's telling you to do something, I like to go to that scripture, lean not on your own understanding. Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Sometimes it may not make a lot of sense, but the obedience piece is where God wants us to be. So, and then the other part was... By doing that, by loving our brothers and our sisters in the Lord and uplifting them, and um, we're giving God the glory. We're giving thanks to God by doing it through Jesus. So, sometimes when we see others in a fault, whether it's our spouse, ministers, pastors, other people in the church, it may just be an opportunity to pray for that person. Yeah, you might have to say something, but we've got to get off the offense piece of it and realize that we're His glory. Of course not everybody's His glory because the world is full of sin. When you're in sin and living any old kind of lifestyle, that's not giving God any kind of glory. But when you changed, when you've been born again, when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, when you've been filled with Jesus in your heart and He's leading and guiding and directing you, or His glory. So, the other scripture He gave me was Matthew 16. Let's dive into that. Because they're, they're kind of all tied together. I know this might seem a little off, off the beaten trail, but it's not. If you listen to all these series, part 1, part 2, and part 3, they'll all kind of tie together. It's just This is just a lot, but it's the direction that the Lord's given me. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but by Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, He's given us keys. That's what he was telling me. These, there's certain scriptures that are keys. John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can see the Father except through me. There's all these key scriptures. But anyhow, they're kind of all tied together. I'm going to do a part 
2 and a part 3 series 2 but it it's just a directional message that I want to get across what is he telling you to do flow with it go with it you know There's a reason and a purpose why he's telling you certain things. And he may deal with you, you know, with me it's in dreams and it's been, it was in visions and now it's in dreams and still visions. But, you know, I mean, he has different ways of speaking to, to, to people, but we're all his vessels. Whether you're the church janitor or the senior pastor or, or you're not able to make it at all the church because you got a 60 hour work week, you know, you may just interject the word of God into your children and read the Bible all the time and just pray and constantly seek God and, and get to church when you can. Getting to church is important, very important, because it uplifts us and we uplift each other and we gain strength. and just, it, It's necessary, but that's not our salvation. Sorry to tell the church, you know, some of the church leaders that, but, you know, it's your relationship with God and that's what he's after. So, that's, I'm going to end this with end that with this and then you know you want to hear more watch part two and part three um, I'm going to put the same message but I'm just going to call them parts um, and then the last thing I want to end this with is one of the things he's been dealing with me about started a couple years ago he started giving me cities and then he gave me states and then he gave me countries even but he gave me specific cities and I'll have to google them well, we just came back from a trip into Pennsylvania I don't want to go to Pennsylvania. It's thousands of miles away. It costs us thousands of dollars to get there, you know, hotels. And we were on the road for two weeks. But he gave me some specifics. Not all, but some. One of the things that was awesome was the first first night we spent in a little town in Tennessee. Um, got up at 4.30 in the morning. And I'm like, man, God, I'm tired. And... You know, I don't really want to get up, but I will. And I got up and went outside to pray. But I got out there about 5 o'clock and sat on this bench. And about 6 o'clock came around. And I had a couple cups of coffee in my prayer time. And just, you know, it was quiet. Nobody was around. And it was just, it was good. But I was like, okay, I, here I am, God. Now what? So, you know, we're on this journey. And this is just, I didn't have a specific about that city or anything. But it's like, okay, God. So I looked down and was going to go get another cup of coffee. And, uh, said, well, I better pick up my Bible because, you know, I don't want somebody to come out here and just take it, you know. Not, and so I was like, I'm just going to pick it up because I, I love it. It's my favorite Bible. I love it. Um, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, no, it'll be fine. Just leave it there. So I was like, okay. So I go in and get a cup of coffee. I come back out, and there's this guy standing over by my Bible right next to it. Well, long story, but I ministered to him for an hour and a half. But he works there, and he, he always he goes out to smoke, but he always goes to the side of the building, so he's not out in the front. That day, he came out to the front, smoking a cigarette, and he looked over and saw my Bible sitting there, and he said he was drawn to it. So he came over there, standing by my Bible, right when I was coming out, drawn to it. So we don't know, you know, all we may not know all the specifics and the reasons and purposes and directions that God's given us and things that he's intersections with other people's lives but God does so follow it that's what I'm trying to tell you in this message this directional listen with wholeheartedness to what God's telling you to do and just flow but anyhow so I'm gonna go to part two and part three um, it's just a lot to tell you to share with you we love you guys um, Tune in. Thanks for tuning in. Look at some of my other videos. Share them with other people if you want. You can email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Got any comments? Put them on, my, you know, on the channel. So anyhow, we love you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in and listening. And I'll talk to you real soon.